Hi, welcome to uh, the YWAM devotional series. My name is Kevin and I'm the operations manager here. And today I'd like to share, uh, I'd like to share, I guess something that's been on my heart over the last uh, probably two months or so. And uh, it's actually just one character in mind and uh, this guy we know him as Jacob. And uh, Jacob is an interesting character. Uh, unfor he has one of the most unfortunate names in the Bible because it flat out means liar or deceiver. And it kind of went with him. Uh, but despite all that, prior to his birth, we knew that the younger would serve, that the older would serve the younger, not the other way around. And uh, and and throughout the throughout his life, we see that things kind of get a bit crazy when it came to him and his brother. But um, that isn't the point of this story. Uh, point of uh, of what I would like to share today. Um, one of the biggest things is actually when. Uh, when Jacob is actually fleeing for his life from his brother because he had actually deceived his brother quite badly, uh, he actually finds himself in the land of the Canaanites and God speaks to him and says that you, he's essentially you're going to inherit this land. And the promise that was given to his grandfather Abraham was extended to him in that line. And, and that's when we start seeing a lot of, a lot of interesting refining going on in, in Jacob's life. Uh, so we have this promise given by God and we're and we think automatically that you know when we're given a promise life is automatically going to get better but unfortunately for Jacob doesn't really uh, he gets uh, he decides to uh, go to the land of his uncle and and work for uh, for seven years for uh, uh, for the uh, for uh, to, in order to marry uh, Rachel and uh, he gets tricked and ends up staying in the land another seven years working for, uh, working for Uncle Laban. And we find that, uh, that Jacob was looking for romance to, uh, uh, to fulfill his life. That didn't work out so well. So he started, he started becoming really good at raising, uh, at, uh, raising sheep and goats and all types of livestock. And, uh, and he thought that, okay, well, if I can establish my name, maybe that will be what I'm looking for. And we find out that doesn't seem to work either. And then lastly, we find that uh, he manages to take a bunch of idols, and uh, and he think and he must have thought to himself, well, if I have the protection of these deities, maybe I'll be able to get ahead. And it turns out that after doing all of this with romance, economic power, and with these foreign gods, he finds himself running from his brother again. And and. This is when Jacob is put to his, put to this, I guess, the hardest test of his life. And he's nervous, he thinks, he thinks that he's not gonna escape, uh, he's not gonna escape from his brother alive. So he sends off his family, and he ends up wrestling with a man. We find out that, we find out that he ends up wrestling with God. And, and one of the most important things that happens in Jacob's life is that God says, okay, you are no longer gonna be called Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God. And uh, better, be, better to be known as one who struggles with God than to be one known as a liar or deceiver. And one of the most interesting things that happens from this moment is how God then reunites Jacob and Esau. And then on top of that, uh, God is able to bring Jacob into the land of the Canaanites where tribes of people or even cities would have stopped him God, God's spirit went down in terror for all of the people below. And Jacob and his entire family and all of his livestock were able to pass on into the land of the Canaanites without a problem. And then finally, at the end of the story, we find that Jacob gets the promise of God reiterated to him. And it, we see the com combination of the promise and the renaming. And the reason why I share all of this is because in life, so much, uh, so many times, we can easily we can easily be discouraged because we'll hear a promise at one point and think, okay, life is going to get better. But we go through life and we feel this process just isn't going to work. That these plans aren't working out for us. But one of the things that uh, that I'm reminded on top of this all is what Solomon wrote. Uh, Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your work to the Lord and He will establish your plans. 
Now, it wasn't commit your plans to the Lord and he will establish your, your work. We see it's the other way around. And this is kind of what happened to Jacob is that he got the promise and then God put him through this process where Jacob was going to learn to trust in God, to know God. Eventually, Jacob didn't put so much stock in romance. He didn't put so much stock in the, in the economic power. And he gave up the foreign gods. And we know now that Jacob was blessed. Uh, Jacob got a chance to carry on to the point where actually Jesus came through Jacob's line. And, and we're very blessed. And then, uh, and, and then it makes me think then, what happens with our lives? What happens when we get a chance to, uh, when we get a chance to hear a promise from God? What happens when we go through the promise? Do we think that just because we're, we're, we're planning things one way, that it means that we're going to find success altogether? Or do we learn to just trust God, work with Him, and see his power come out through our lives altogether. Jacob had a, didn't have the easiest time, but he made it through. Life isn't always easy, but from what I know about God's promise is that when he takes us through his process, we'll get a chance to see his power work through our lives.